Hi! Welcome to iEducator. This is Teacher Jeff. I'm an educator and an engineer by profession. And today, we will discuss critical path method and the basics of critical path method or CPM. So what do we mean by CPM then? If we say CPM, it is a project modeling technique that is used by project managers to find the important deadlines and deliver a project on time. Remember that in a project, the critical path is actually the longest distance between the start and the finish, including all the tasks and their duration. And once a critical path is determined, then you'll have a clear picture of the project's actual schedule. Now, in order for us to better understand um, the basics of critical path method, let me give you an example. So, for example, consider the details of a project as shown in the tabulation below. So, as you can notice, we have here uh, three different uh, columns. First, we have the activity column. Second, we have the immediate predecessor and second we have the duration expressed in terms of weeks now as you can notice we have activities from activity a to activity n and also we have the immediate predecessors and the duration in weeks our goal here is we need to construct the cpm network second we need to determine the critical path and project completion time. And finally, we need to compute the total floats and free floats for non-added activities. But before solving the problem, allow me to discuss to you first or explain the basic concepts of critical path method. First, we need to understand project management. Second, we need to discuss the different phases of project management. Third, we need to get ourselves acquainted to the guidelines of network construction. And finally, we have the critical path. Now, the reason we need to discuss these basic concepts first is because they serve as our basic foundation of critical path analysis. And so for that matter, it is of paramount importance for us to get acquainted with these concepts as this will help us understand better about the whole topic. So what is meant by project management then? Now, if we see project management, it is a management of a certain project which consists of interrelated activities that are to be executed in a certain order prior the entire task is completed. Now, what do we mean by this? What we mean about this is that it says management of a certain project. So what project could it be? Well, we encounter projects in our everyday lives, correct? In business and at home. Now, think about projects for a minute, okay? At work, you might be building or contributing to a deliverable like a report, a website, a tool or a product, or even a building. And at home, you might be making a meal, planning a vacation, or even working on upgrades to your home, right? Now, these are true projects that have a defined start and end date, a goal, a scope, and resources. And they all require some level of management. Now, in business, which is where we will focus in this chapter, Projects are typically unique operations that are conducted to meet specific goals. Projects may include the development of software to increase employee productivity or the construction of a building to house community events or the design of a website to decrease call volume to a business. Now, 
The list could go on and on. All of these types of projects require a team of people who are responsible for different aspects of the delivery. For instance, you'd likely to see a designer, developer, and a copywriter working on a website design projects. And in many instances, a project manager is staffed to these projects to ensure that the team delivers the project on time, under budget, and meeting its stated goals. So then, what is project management? It's not a tool or a person. Instead, it's a practice. Aside from that, project management can also refer to the activities that are interrelated in a logical sequence, which is known as precedence relationship. Now, the most common precedence relationship is when one activity cannot start until another activity has finished. Take note that part of the process of building a project schedule involves breaking down the work into smaller activities or what we call the work breakdown structure, right? And then sequencing the activities and when you sequence the activities you should make sure that every activity is related to at least one other activity and in many cases the relationships will involve two or more activities and there are a couple ways to represent these relationships and perhaps the most common technique is called precedence diagramming method or the PDM. Now, this technique is sometimes called activity or node or AON. Now, in the PDM technique, the activities themselves are placed in boxes and the boxes are connected with arrows that show the precedence relationship. Now, in order for us to better understand that, don't you worry, because we will be giving an example of precedence relationship later on. Now, the most common precedence relationship is when one activity cannot start until another activity has finished. And in most schedules, this is the relationship that exists in almost all, if not all, cases. And this is referred to as finish to start relationship. However, there are three other ways that one more activities can be related to one another. And all four are described here. As you can see, you have there four uh, methods. You have finish to finish. You have start to start, you have start to start, and finish to finish. Now, in order for us to better understand each of them, let us discuss them one by one, starting with finish to finish. So what do we mean by finish to finish precedence relationship? Now, this means that activity B cannot start until activity A has completed. This is by far the most common relationship between multiple activities. And in most schedules, all relationships will be finished to start. For example, activity A is the create the project charter. And activity B is obtain the project charter approval from the project sponsor. Now, this finish to start relationship would say that we must create the project charter first before we obtain project charter approval from the project sponsor, if that makes sense. And on the other hand, we also have what we call start to finish. Now, what do we mean by start to finish? Start to finish means that activity A must start before activity B can finish. This is very a rare relationship. For example, let's assume that you would want to fertilize your garden, but the plants must all be wet when the fertilizer is applied. Now, activity A is to fertilize the garden. And second, activity B is to water the garden. Now, the start to finish relationship says we need to start watering the garden or activity B first, 
to get the plants wet, right? This activity must continue until the fertilizing starts or activity A. And this will ensure the plants remain wet until the fertilizer is ready to be applied. And take note that you can start watering at any time and you can finish fertilizing at any time as well. And the relationship only ties the start of activity A to the completion of activity B. Now, next method, we have what we call start to start. Now, this means that activity A must start before activity B can start. Now, in order for us to better understand this, let me give you an example. So, for example, assume that you are having your walls painted in one room and wallpaper is being hung in another room. Now, you want to minimize the total disruption and so you want to make sure both activities happen at the same time. So, activity A is paint the walls Activity B is hang the wallpaper. Now, remember, the wallpaper hangers may be ready to go activity B. However, the start-to-start -start relationship says that they cannot start until the painting starts or activity A. Now, this relationship is based on the activity start times and the end times of each activity are not related and in fact, one activity could end at a much later time than the other. And finally, the last method that we have is what we call finish to finish. Now, this means that activity A must finish first before activity B can finish. Now, in order for us to better understand this, let me give you a scenario. For example, assume you are cooking dinner and you want the turkey to finish cooking before the potatoes. Now, activity A is cook the turkey and activity B is cook potatoes. Now, take note, the finish to finish relationship says that the turkey must finish cooking or activity A before the potatoes finish cooking or activity b this relationship is based on the end times they can each start whenever they need to as long as they finish in this order and finally Project management can also be defined as a management of a certain project which is represented in a form of network for the purpose of analytical treatment to get solutions for scheduling and controlling its activities. So this is what project management is all about. Also, we have to take note that project management is divided into two techniques. So the two techniques of project management is what we call the critical path method or the CPM. And second, we have the program or project evaluation and review technique or what we call the PERT. So what is meant by CPM? If we say CPM or critical path method, it is a network-based scheduling used primarily for industrial projects in which activity times are known. On the other hand, program or project evaluation and review technique or PERT is a network analysis for planning or scheduling using probabilistic activity time and also used to handle uncertainty times. So what are the phases of project management then? Now that brings us to the second basic concept of the critical path method or the CPM. So the second basic concept as discussed earlier, that would be the phases of project management. And take note that there are three phases of project management. First, we have planning. And in planning phase, what we do is to actually divide the project into distinct activities. And second, we also estimate time requirement for each activity. Third, we establish precedence relationship among the activities. And finally, we construct the network diagram. 
and the second phase of project management that would be what we call scheduling and in scheduling phase we what we do is to determine the start and end time of each and every activity and finally the last phase is what we call controlling and in controlling phase we use the network diagram and time chart for continuous monitoring and progress reporting and the next basic concept of project management is what we call the guidelines in network construction now there are six guidelines in network construction so let me start with guideline number one now as you can see um, guideline number one states that the starting event and the ending event of an activity are called tail event and head event respectively as you can see this is an example of a network diagram right now you can see there are a lot of activities the numbered activities we have one two three four five six seven eight nine these numbered activities inside a circle are called nodes so you have there node one two three four five six seven eight and nine and aside from that we also have activities a b c d e f g h and i now going back to our first guideline it says the starting event and the ending event of an activity are called tail event and head event respectively so in this case node one is our starting event and therefore it is called a tail event okay on the other hand node two is our ending event and therefore it is called as head event and the second guideline that we have it says the network should have a unique starting node or tail event now the second guideline means that for each and every activity we need to have a unique starting event uh, for example you have here a uh, node number one this is our unique starting event for activity a and its ending event is node number two now node number two becomes the unique starting um event for activity b and so on and so forth okay so the third guideline says the network should have a unique ending node or head event meaning to say the third guideline means that for each and every activity we need to have a unique ending or completion event or head event and the fourth guideline is no activity should be represented by more than one arc in the network what do we mean by this uh, take note that if we say arc okay it means activity so going back to our sample network diagram okay so as you can see there for activity a okay it has nodes one and two correct now for activity b it has nodes two and three and so on and so forth so therefore there should be no activity that should be represented by more than one arc or activity in the network all right if that makes sense and the fifth guideline that we have it says no two activities should have the same starting node and the same ending node now it means that there should be no two activities that start with the same node and end at the same node for each and every activity there should be a new starting node and a new ending node and finally the last um guideline that we have dummy activity is an imaginary activity indicating precedence relationship only duration of dummy activity is equal to zero now as you can see in our sample network diagram the broken lines we have from nodes four to five this is a broken line and from nodes three to six that is also another 
broken line okay so these broken lines represent our dummy or imaginary activities so in this case our first dummy activity is activity connected with nodes four and five and our second dummy activity is the activity connected by nodes three and six and so for this matter these dummy or imaginary activities indicate precedence relationship only and therefore there will be no duration for these dummy activities as you can notice nodes four and five are precedence of node six correct and nodes three and six are precedence for node number eight okay now that we have finally understood the basic concepts of cpm as well as the guidelines in network construction we are now able to solve our problem now that we are able to solve our problem now going back to our problem remember consider the details of a project as shown in the tabulation below as you can notice we have there um three columns first column is allotted for the activity second column we have for the immediate predecessor and third column we have the duration expressed in terms of weeks okay so we have activities from a to um n okay and as you can notice you have their immediate predecessor with its correspondence corresponding uh, predecessors for each activity and we have their uh, duration in weeks okay now remember that our goal is to first construct the cpm or the critical path method network second is to determine the critical path and project completion time and finally we have to compute as well the total floats and free floats for non-added activities now going back to our example as you can notice activities a b and c respectively don't have any immediate predecessor right they're blank correct so this means that we can start from these three activities activities a b and c thus in constructing our network diagram we have okay we have node one okay we have their node one and we also have two so we will connect that one there and this will be our activity a okay now remember that your activity b doesn't have any predecessor correct so therefore this will be our activity b okay and our activity c will be located right here Okay, this will be our activity C. The next thing that we need to do is to indicate the duration of each activity. Now, going back to our tabulation, as you can see for activity A, the duration is three weeks. Activity B, the duration is six weeks. And activity C is five weeks. Again, for A, we have three weeks. For B, we have six weeks. And for activity C, we have five weeks. Okay, there. Remember that we started with activities A, B, and C, correct? Now, going back to our uh, tabulation, as you can see in the immediate predecessor of activity D, right there the immediate predecessor of activity d is activity b now this means that after completing activity b we are now able to start with d but aside from that as you can see a little below right here okay so as you can see 
B is also the immediate predecessor of activity G, correct? Now, this means that after completing B, we can start with activities D, okay, there, and G as well, here, okay. However, before illustrating activity D, we have to check first whether or not D ends with other activities. And so, for that matter, we have to verify its immediate predecessor. So, as you can see a little below, if you can notice, C and D are the immediate predecessors of activity H, and C and D are also the immediate predecessors of activity I, right? Now, this means that activities H and I end in exactly the same location. And therefore, we need to start from B and end with C. So, this is B and this is C. So, we need to start from B and end with C, okay? So, this is how our um, arrow diagram would look like. So, this is now becomes our activity D. And remember, our activity D's duration, that would be six weeks. Okay, there. Again, like I said earlier, both of these activities end at exactly the same location. And hence, this is where our activity D is located with a duration of six weeks. So far, we have illustrated um, activities A. We also have B, C, and D. So the next activity we're going to be working on will be activity E. But take note that prior we continue drawing our network diagram, we need to see to it first whether a particular activity is an immediate predecessor of any other activity. And so we can continue illustrating the network and at the same time, uh, we can easily determine the exact direction. Now, as you can see, E is the immediate predecessor of activity J, right? Having said that, activity E is an independent activity, which means that it ends separately. And therefore, we can start at E where A begins. Again, we can start at E where A begins. So how does it look like there? Uh, when we illustrate our network diagram. As mentioned earlier, we can start at activity E where A ends. So this is activity A. So a activity A starts at node 1 and activity A ends at node 2. So therefore, this is where we will start with activity E. So this is how it looks like. Okay, this now becomes our uh, node 5. And this is our activity E. And going back to our tabulation, E has a duration of 8 weeks. So finally, we are done with activity E, right? So the next that we will be working on, that would be activity F. Like what we did earlier, we need to see to it whether activity F is an immediate predecessor of any other activity. Now, as you can see, F, okay, right here, is an immediate predecessor of K. And also, F is an immediate predecessor of activity L. Now, this clearly means that F is not an independent activity because it ends with other activities. This being said, this is considered as a single node for activities F, G, and H respectively. When I say uh, they are considered as a single node, 
What I mean about that is that activities F, G, and H ends at one node, okay? As you can see, F starts where A ends. As you can see in our network diagram, this is activity A. Activity A starts here and it ends here in this node. And take note that activity F starts where A ends. So therefore, this is where activity F is located. Somewhere here. And this becomes our node number six and this is our activity f going back to our tabulation activity f has four weeks duration so we have four weeks 